Good afternoon. It's Jeff Christian of CPM Group. It's about 1.10 on Friday, the 15th of December here in New York. I uh, want to talk a little bit about what we've seen in gold and silver prices over the last couple of weeks. Um, and then talk a little bit about what we have seen over the course of the last year and what we expect for next year. A little bit of housekeeping will explain the subject matter. Our video schedule at CPM Group is we will do this video today, Friday the 15th. We'll do another one next Tuesday, and then we're going to take two weeks off um, for year-end holidays. We'll be back probably on the 5th of January. That's our scheduled resumption for the next video after next Tuesday. Uh, and we'll be doing some more wrap-up of, of the year that's been and our expectations for the year that comes. Uh, so just, you know, a little bit of housekeeping. Now, we've seen prices very volatile in the first half of this month. We have saw gold rise to record levels on uh, Sunday night, come back off sharply, come back up. It's about $2,050 right now as I'm speaking. Silver rose not to a record level, but it rose sharply um, and on December 3rd as well came back off, came back up, and it continues to trade in that range of, say, 22 to 26-something uh, an ounce. A lot of volatility, been reacting to a number of factors, a very strong uh, jobs report at the end of November, lower inflation figures uh, than the FOMC and Fed announcements uh, yesterday, uh, the 14th of, of December. So a lot of things going on. And uh, we've seen volatility there. Over the course of the year, things have been relatively calm. Um, we used as our theme for Monex, a good client of ours uh, for decades, uh, for 2023, we said that it would be the year of the eye of the storm, that we would be in a relatively calm place, having gone through some very volatile years, 2019 through 2022, um, but that those big problems that the world was facing haven't gone away. Some new ones have come. Things have gotten bigger. Some things have gotten better. Uh, but that we were looking at 24 and 25 as a year where we get out of the eye of the, the storm and back into the next storm. And we really think that that's going to happen. You know, it was a calm year, especially for silver. Gold did rise to new record prices uh, a couple times over the course of the year. Uh, but even within that, it, it was a, a relatively calm, steady way. You know, in terms of the promoters, the world didn't collapse. The banking system didn't collapse. The dollar didn't collapse. The dollar actually moved higher. We had a couple small or medium-sized banks that had troubles in the first half of this year. Uh, the, the banking regulators took a... Uh, proactive um, actions and and kept that from spreading. So it was a relatively modest uh, factor. We did lose one large bank in Europe, uh, but it was taken over and, and no creditors, uh, uh, none, no depositors lost money on it. So it was a relatively quiet uh, period of time. Our expectations are that 2024 will not be so calm. And we see the December price volatility, not just in gold and silver, but in other commodities, and the dollar has been coming off uh, somewhat from its high levels earlier this year. Interest rates, uh, stocks, a lot of volatility across the board there in the first half of December. And we see that as a prelude for what 2024 um, has in store. We're going into 2024 in a better economic position than we had expected and that most people had expected. And I'll go through some uh, charts in a second about that. Um, unfortunately, politically, we are probably in worse shape uh, going into 2024 than most of us had expected. We have expected politics to be problematic in 2024, 2025. Uh, and they show every sign of being problematic, uh, perhaps even more problematic than we had anticipated. So let's look at some of the economic backgrounds. This is real GDP. 
uh, quarterly uh, quarter basis. And, and you can see the real GDP, 5% in the third quarter. It's coming off a little bit this year. Uh, but it's basically in line with much of what we've seen definitely since 2010, 2009, when we came out of the last recession prior to, except with the exception of the 2020. Uh, and it's been relatively strong. Did have a quarter or two of negative uh, growth in 2022 but it's been basically pretty strong. Uh, our expectation, actually the Fed came out with its expectation of 1.4% real GDP next year. That has been CPM Group's expectation uh, for our 2024 US GDP, real GDP, uh, at least for several months now. And, and we do see a slowing down of real economic activity. Even so, we're seeing very strong numbers there. So the Fed has raised interest rates uh, substantially since 2022. Uh, they have shown signs of peaking. They are talking in yesterday's commentary about the potential for three interest rate cuts over the course of 2024. Probably not in the first quarter, although maybe as soon as March you might see one. Uh, so we seem to be at or near the end of the interest rate site increase cycle. And we're going through a plateauing period now for several months, probably a couple more months, two, three more months at least going forward. And then we might see some declines. So interest rates, as I've said repeatedly, um, they've risen from 0%. 25 basis points to five, five and a quarter, five and a half percent uh, interest. And and even with that big number uh, increase, you still have nominal interest rates at very low levels, you know, basically lower than most of the period of time from the 1960s into, say, 2000. Uh, so it hasn't been an increase that has thrown the world or the United States into a recession. If you look at it on a real basis, and these are all treasury, 10-year treasury notes, on a real basis, real interest rates have gone positive on a 10-year note, uh, and they are now around 2%. Our expectation is that there are very few investors who are going to say, oh, if I can lock in 2% real returns on treasury notes uh, over the next 10 years, there's no reason for me to not for to hold gold and silver at this point. We don't think that two percent real rates uh, are enough to cause investors to pivot away from gold and silver, especially in an environment with other economic problems, financial uh, market problems, and political uncertainties, uh, which are likely to rise. The Fed, in assessing its monetary policy, looks at its chart, which is to try to maximize employment while uh, keeping inflation under control. This is like U.S. unemployment. You can see it's at the lowest level that's been since uh, the 1960s or so. And, and um, so you've got a relatively strong economy there. Employment is coming back. Uh, jobs and partici employment participation is rising again after a, a steep decline in 2020. And the other factor is inflation. And, you know, inflation, we have had a transitory spike up to 8%, and we are now back down to 3 or 4%, depending on how you look at uh, infl U.S. consumer price in inflation. So the Fed has been doing relatively decently. The economy has been doing relatively recently, uh, decent recently. That gives the Fed leeway to be more proactive in facing the challenges that we see in 2024. But as I've also often said, monetary policy and Fed policy and central bank policy around the world is secondary to fiscal policy. And it's the fiscal realm and, and the governance realm, they are the president and the Congress in the United States the presidents and prime ministers and, and their congresses around the world, that's what really worries us going into 24. So we're looking for a more volatile 2024. 
We think the volatility that you've seen in the first half of December um, possibly is a prelude or an indication of what's yet to come. We may see things calm down over the next couple of weeks as financial markets uh, around the world sort of wrap up the year. You could see some profit taking and some book squaring that could move the prices up or down. Yeah, with gold, we wouldn't be surprised to see the price come back down to $2,020 or so on that kind of profit taking after moving up sharply earlier this week and yesterday. Um, and with silver, we wouldn't be surprised to see it come off a little bit too. We're not looking for any major declines uh, over the next couple of weeks, uh, but we're also not, not necessarily looking for further increases over the next couple of weeks. Once January starts, it's a different book, and we wouldn't be surprised to see a strengthening of gold and silver prices in January and February for a variety of reasons. Um, that's all I have for now. Take care of yourself. Take care of people around you. Do something good for the world this weekend, and we'll talk to you on Tuesday.